Com or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. I called CDC not long ago and said, how many active cases are being monitored in the United States of Ebola? And they said 1,400. I said, where is that on your website, these updates? They said, we're not putting it on the web. So I think there is an effort to control the message and to tamp it down. Um, this is public information we have a right to, and I think the media should not hype it, but cover it. Cheryl Atkinson, that's a respected reporter, investigative journalist at Fox News. We had a top Forbes writer that writes their medical news saying they were at the meeting months ago where they said we're going to cover up what's going on with Ebola. I've had a medical doctor on by name saying that the medical doctors in these hospitals, and we named the hospital, the Harry Truman Center in Missouri, and that they were being told that they were Ebola cases. Then I talked to a bunch of other doctors off record. One doctor I know personally that runs a chain of hospitals in a major Texas city. One of the cities that has an NFL team. And there's a blue star on their helmets. <laughs> they didn't tell me not to say the city. I've just gone ahead and said it. It's up in the DFW area. And now they're scared. We just talked to him again a week ago. He comes down to Austin sometimes. We talked to him on the phone last week. He's scared because it's definitely... Ebola and it's being covered up and they think they're liable for taking part in this. Now, I've got all this important news, but right there, now Fox News investigative journalist is saying they're covering up. Headline from Breitbart. Atkinson, CDC hiding numbers of possible Ebola cases in the U.S. That's exactly what Infowars.com had that headline two months ago. Here's one of our headlines. We wrote scores of stories on the subject. Obama caught ordering press to cover up Ebola. Pharmacologist reveals how press has bowed to government demand to keep Americans in the dark. Only DrudgeReport.com linked to our story. And then, then I guess that forced Yahoo to, but no national coverage, not Fox, not CNN. And see, as bad as Fox is, that's the channel where they'll talk about our government growing opium in Afghanistan. And that's the channel where they'll talk about they may be covering up Ebola. It's, it's just on a scale of things, it's, it's much better than CNN or MSNBC. And remember, they let Bill O'Reilly have a show about women being cyber-stalked and sex crimes and then just cut to a clip of me as a non sequitur with no description why, screaming. So they're bad. Some of their people are bad, but they've got good people over there like Judge Andrew Napolitano and Lou Dobbs and people like that. So, so that's all I'm saying is at least they're not openly anti-gun on Fox News. Now there's the article with the video. Bill O'Reilly smears Alex Jones in hate speech rant. And he goes, yeah, there's all these sex crimes going on the internet. And they just cut to me screaming about the police had nothing to do with women. And, I, and I've never been charged with anything, never been a, I mean, it's just insane. Only thing worse is MSNBC saying I influenced the Boston bombers with no proof and that I want cops dead. And I don't mean to make the show about me. It's just that if they can do this to me, or if they can blame the next Oklahoma City on you-know-who or Rush Limbaugh, we all fall. If they can take down a Drudge Report like the White House has been caught saying they want to, the media matters, so they just gave a big award the White House did this week, they can get me. And you know who else they can get? They can get your free speech. Because you take anybody's rights away, they can take everybody's rights away. When they try to bring down big organizations, when they try to bring down people that have tens of millions of listeners, you better believe that's an attack on your rights, not just the person under attack. All right, we've got the cops executed uh, in New York and Brooklyn. We're going to break that down. 
We've got uh, Team America also being removed from theaters, like the Alamo Draft House here in Austin and Dallas. Not just uh, the uh, new movie uh, about Kim Jong Un, the interview. It it's a big broadcast. Stay with us. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Incinerated to heat UK hospitals. Soylent Green, ladies and gentlemen, is made out of people. But now children are literally being passed through the furnace in order to fuel hospitals in the UK. They're being sacrificed on the altar of efficiency and prosperity. What is the secret of Soylent Green? The powdered flesh from dead babies. Some people believe they can cure disease. Because of its enormous popularity, Soylent Green is in short supply. Remember, Tuesday is Soylent Green Day. The supply of Soylent Green has been exhausted. You must evacuate the area. Today is Tuesday! The federal court ruled that the shareholders of PepsiCo, big Bilderberg Group company, are not allowed to know uh, what they're using the baby parts for in the flavoring, but we already know. So enjoy the flavor. We're going to get the real solution, which is going to be a combination of death panels and, and sales taxes. I'm consistently pro-death. I'm for assisted suicide. I'm for regular suicide. I'm for whatever gets the freeway moving. Is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient, would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade up in medical costs? But that's called the death panel. Uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. They told me to, uh, to say that they were sorry, but that you had become unreliable. <laughs> Is this the kind of society that you want to live in? Any kind of society that would do this to its children will do it to its senior citizens. It will do it to its dissidents. That kind of society will also eventually turn on its police, on its army, on its prison guards, on the quislings and the collaborators who make that possible. This is nothing but a suicide cult. The scoops are on their way. The scoops are on their way. I repeat, the scoops are on their way. You will find out why Soylent Green means life. You will find out why Soylent Green means death. We gotta stop them. What is the secret of Silent Green? Silent Green is people! Next thing they'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You gotta tell them. And that is basically a boil down of fiction, Silent Green, that came out in the early 70s with Charlton Heston, an excellent sci fi film integrated in with the current policies, the anti-human policies that are being promoted. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're live. It is Sunday, the 21st day of December 2014. And I didn't tell the crew this, but uh, why don't we dig up some of the classical Beethoven or Mozart, Mozart Christmas canons and have a bit of that today uh, in the spirit, especially because it's so politically incorrect in such a free country all over the United States. I have a stack of articles we'll be hitting in the second hour 
Colleges, high schools, elementary schools are saying, don't hand out Christmas cards. Don't say Merry Christmas. And whatever you do, don't say Jesus Christ. Let me explain something. On a college or a public school, you can read the Bible at lunch. You can give anybody Christmas cards you want, as long as they're not obscene. You could give them um, cards that weren't Christmas cards. You could give them copies of the Bill of Rights. It's your free association. And Christmas trees are being banned in cities all over the country. I'm sick of it. Plus, a Christmas tree is not even really a Christian symbol. They've dug up Christmas trees in 20,000-year-old caves in Germany and France. They hauled the trees in for the winter equinox, which is today. And they put evergreens, which they thought were magic because they lived during the cold weather when the other trees lost their leaves, and they would decorate them with ornaments and worship them. Many cultures worship trees. It's in the Bible. You know, saying the people that go out in the groves and worship the trees, look out for them. But the point is, is that I love Christmas trees. Now it's a Christian symbol, expropriated. I, I, I I'm not getting into that. It's just that the pagans and people are always at the vanguard. The Wiccans, every time I turn around, are filing lawsuits and stuff saying, get rid of Christmas trees. Listen, dummies, the Christmas tree is your symbol. I mean, it's just over the top how ignorant people are. But it doesn't matter. It's part of Western culture in the Netherlands. They're trying to ban the Black Peters, which for over 800 years they've had before transatlantic slavery, before one black slavery, people never even seen an African. It was mythical that Santa Claus had black elves and white elves. It was neat. Nothing to do with putting black people down. They're trying to ban the Black Peters. That's what it's called. It's just getting Ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely ridiculous to where, remember last year, the city of Seattle put out a release to all their agencies, police, you name it, saying, do not have brown bag days where they'll have in-service training. Everybody has that in, in professions. And then you come and they say brown bag provided. They were telling all the HR departments, do not say we, the department will provide a brown bag lunch. Everybody knows that means an apple chips and a ham sandwich or a chicken sandwich. There it is, K-O-M-O -O News. City officials urge ban on politically offensive language. This is mental illness. And it goes on to say the word brown bag and citizen is offensive. Oh, I forgot that part of it. Because if you say citizen, that makes a non-citizen feel bad. So now just everybody's a citizen and gets, gets everything free. Meanwhile, all of us are losing our basic freedoms, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution, and all of us have our First Amendment under attack and we should be coming together against it. Now, I have been predicting the last three years intensely, because I could see the drumbeat on CNN, MSNBC, and by the White House, and by Mother Jones and just all the other auxiliaries of creating racial obsession and infighting and divide and conquer. But then, back in February of this year, I issued an emergency alert before the Brown case, before uh, any of these cases. In fact, there's another report. Flashback. U.S. Army training to fight black Americans. That's from November. Originally, July 17th, we flashbacked it. I can see a rollout. Just like Poland could see for six months the Nazis massing on their border in 1940. And they were saying they're about to attack us. And the Germans would say, you're paranoid, you're a conspiracy theorist. I can see the buildup. I can see the preparation to try to create racial di division and then race war. But also play the populations off against the police, which will then cause the police to become more paranoid and more paramilitary and go under federal control because they'll be indicted if they engage in any paramilitary activity unless they're under federal auspices. Just like the feds and CNN demonized asset forfeiture seizure in the last 20 years to get it banned at the state level so the feds can be the only ones that administer it and then they get back up to 85% of the money to the local police that they seize, effectively making them federal. See how that works?
And about three weeks ago, Paul Watson did articles. Uh,